Hi, I'm Rob and this is Gems of War. In this video I'll be going over the Soul Forge review, showing you what's good and bad in there. As well as that I'll be going to the event and doing the Hunting the Leocorn event and creating my team and showing you how it works as well. So that'll be all in this video but we'll start with the Soul Forge review. Let's take a quick look, see what's in there today. We'll start with the weapons. Start at the bottom. Right, the trick and treats there. That's pretty good. I quite like it. A lot of people think it's high mana cost and don't think it's that good. But it is very nearly a perfect mix of Essence of Evil and Reflection of Good. The only thing it doesn't have is the explosion which those two weapons have which generates a ton of mana for your team. But other than that it is a really decent weapon and can be used effectively. I've done a video on a team with this so um, take a look at that in my other videos to check that one out because it's actually quite good. Dustbringer is okay, it's um, one of those ones which is more completist, you don't really see a lot of teams using it and generally if you don't see it in a lot of teams it's hard to synergize into a lot of good teams effectively so wouldn't essentially um, do Duskbringer but it is an okay weapon. Rope Dart, now we're talking, now that is quite possibly the best weapon in the game. Essence of Evil is one of my absolute favorites but with the advent of Lycanthropy Essence of Evil now, when you've cast it on someone, it seems to change them to a beast more times than it kills them now. So um, Essence of Evil has dropped down ever so slightly in my overall estimation of how good that weapon is. But Rope Dart is still super, super effective. A really, really good weapon. Absolutely. If you've got the, if you've got the resources, just go get that straight away. You will not regret it. Dawnstone, Dawnbringer, Broken Guard, Shattered Blade, they're all there all the time and have been gone over in my other Soul Forge reviews. Uh, let's take a look at Twin Claws. Explode 35 green gems in my case, it might be different for you. And grant a random status effect to all beast allies, then summon a beast troop. That's pretty good. I like the sound of that. Exploding gems is a really effective way of generating mana. Like, um, you, you do get the mana converters that convert a certain colour to another colour or colour to skulls, but you often have to wait for that alignment, for that to work effectively, because otherwise it just does not work. But exploding gems like this is really effective and quite often with only a few of that color on the screen that can still be really effective because after that you can get some nice cascades so yeah i like the sound of that i may well actually craft that myself in fact i'm going to put my money where my mouth is and craft that myself right now so i do like the sound of that now it is very very good in a beast team that could work really really well so let's have a look at black mane's claw Deal damage to an enemy boosted by Rapture allies, then create a mix of six red and brown gems for each Rapture, Rapture ally. Yeah, another one of these ones where it does a set amount of damage and then a mix of their colour. So um, I'm not over keen on these ones so far. The, the creative mix of those two colours for me on these weapons I've created has not been reliable so far. So um, yeah, not a fan of these ones. Remove all red gems, this is Spear of the Pride. And deal damage to an enemy boosted by gems removed. If the enemy is from Pride Lands, deal double damage. So very situational, you're hardly going to use that. Don't bother. Cat's Paw. Deal damage to an enemy boosted by Pride Land allies, then another one of these ones. Then create a mix of green and red for each Pride Lands ally. Like I said, I'm not a fan of these ones. The amount of times I've cast that, even with a full roster. Of Pride Land allies in this case, like four allies in the team, so you get the maximum amount of that uh, mix of green and red. And the amount of times it just doesn't work for me is unreal. So I've never been a fan of those those kind of weapons. Beastly bow. Yeah, that's another one of the same kind of thing. So skip that. And that's the weapons. So the best one from there for me was um, the one I, I crafted. That's uh, well, well, rope dart is obviously the absolute standout. Just hundred percent, go get it. But yeah, twin claws, very very good. Uh, the only thing I'd say about these other ones, because it's Pride Lands, these may be handy if you fancy it to have a go at the event with these. I'll have a look at what the event um, is, and then take a look at the weapons I've got. And if one of these sounds better. It may be worth coming back in and, and grabbing one of these. But that's open to debate and we'll take a look at that when the time comes. Now, the more exciting part. Let's look at the troops. 
Right, Scroll Reborn, Attire, Tower, Enrage Kurandara, all these are in here all the time and they are in previous Soul Forge reviews, so go check them out if you haven't already. So now, now let's take a look at the Mythics first. The Scourge of Honor. He's actually really, really good. I actually quite like this guy. In my case, deals 35 true damage to all enemies and gains two mana back for each cursed or diseased enemy. Now, that doesn't sound much on its own. But when you take a look at his third trait, that's when it becomes a little bit special. His third trait will automatically curse and disease a random enemy when matching four or more gems. Now, when you combine that with his actual spell, gain two mana back for each cursed or diseased enemy, means when you've got that third trait there, for each cursed or diseased enemy, you're beginning but getting back four mana. So if you've managed to get a load of four matches before you cast this guy, he could get 16 mana back straight away, just like that. That's fantastic. So his mana cost a 22. As soon as you cast that, he may only need six mana to be able to cast that again. And that's why I like him. I haven't actually put a team together with him yet, and I will do soon because I'm just on the fly. I really like the idea of him being, say, with uh, Queen Beatrix. That could work really, really well. So um, I'll do that video soon. So be sure to subscribe if you want to see some teams with him if you're going to craft him because yeah he's pretty decent and definitely worth crafting Ishtara deals damage to all enemies and then creates nine yellow gems boosted by blessed allies um it's okay it's nothing fantastic the third trait is okay but it's even then it's only 50 50 so a 50 50 percent chance to bless a random ally when my turn begins so Holy Armour is pretty decent, but I've used it quite a lot. It's a mid-range-ish mythic. When that Create 9 Yellow Gems works, it's a lovely thing, and it does work really, really well. But the mana cost is high at 25, and the damage is not that fantastic, so I wouldn't rush out and, and craft that one. The only reason I'd craft something like this is if um, it's holding you back in uh, Kingdom Strength. I'll just show you what I mean by that, if so briefly. Like, uh, like Pride Lands here, for example. I've got the Mythic, because I've got an Uberstep. So I've got that, so I'm on power level 12, heading to 13. I'm just waiting for to get a pet to level 20. But somewhere where I haven't got a Mythic, like here, I'm stuck on power level 9. So let, let's pretend that, you know, a, a Mythic from Sword's Edge is in the Soul Forge right now. I would probably craft him anyway, just to unlock this power level to get it going because I'm stuck on level 9 until I do that and the chances are that I'll be able to do power level 10 and 11 really, really quickly once I've actually got a mythic from, from this area. So that is another reason to uh, craft a mythic that you don't necessarily want but it will get you past that power level where, like for me, where I am stuck right now. So how else we got? Reckoning Weaver's still here. Now, absolutely fantastic. If you watched the video last week, then you know how much I love this troop. He's absolutely one of the best in the game. Probably, for me, top five mythic. He's absolutely fantastic. He webs all enemies, which reduces an, uh, an enemy's attack, not attack, sorry, magic, to zero. Then deals a ton of true damage to the last two enemies. And if one of them dies, you explode 15 gems. So if you time this spell right, so you make sure... You actually do kill one of the last um, enemies with that you're going to explode a load of gems and if Rackney Reaver is in the right place you will have a chance to cast him right away again because you can charge him up straight away one of my most recent videos i'll put it in the link below is some arachnid weaver teams and he's mega effective with life and death and essence of evil and re weapons like that so take a look at that his traits as well are absolutely fantastic stealthy Cannot be targeted by spells. Impervious. Immune to all status effects. Devour. Lycanthropy and mana burn. Creeping Doom. Possibly the best trait in the whole game. A 75% chance to summon a web spinner when an enemy dies. A web spinner is an amazing, amazing troop. When you've got it fully traited, that thing does triple skull damage to everything. And can just one-shot opponents. And you can summon one of them. That's amazing. I absolutely love Arachnid Reaver. So, and it's half price right now. 2,000 diamonds. Wow. Just a no-brainer. If you haven't got a Reckoning Reaver and you've got them diamonds, I would 
just get it. It's fantastic. Right, Infernus, this is a good week for decent mythics in here. Infernus is great. When he came out, he was probably the top mythic in the game. He was absolutely amazing. I loved him as soon as I got him, and he was absolutely brilliant. He was just wiping out <laughs> teams left, right, and center. He deals splash damage to two random enemies and then explodes five random gems. Now, don't discount that explode five random gems as a small amount. That's, it actually generates quite a lot of mana back a lot of the time, and Infernus has actually become pretty much ready to go again straight away many times. So you get to cast this again twice sometimes, which is can be quite heavy. Also, his traits are okay, especially the third one. Burn all enemies on four or five gem matches. If you mix this in with a team um, that does extra skull damage on burn, and I did do another video on this as well recently, then um, yeah, that can be mega effective, and Infernus is absolutely worth crafting. Wolf Garok. Eh, not too much a fan. It's, I don't think it's that great. Deals damage to an enemy boosted by Wargear allies, and if the enemy dies, devour a random enemy. Ooh, that's bad for a few reasons, because A, it's not a lot of damage. B, you need to get them in death range, guaranteed death range, to make the rest of the spell work. And then, when they die, it will devour a random enemy, which could be someone else that's already on really low health. So, yeah, it's not great. I don't rate that very highly myself. So that is one to not bother with from there for me. But Infernus and Arachnian Weaver, absolutely yes. And Arachnian Weaver, I would take ahead of Infernus just because of that half um, cost. And he is a great troop as well. But Infernus, definitely worth doing as well. And Scourge of Honor, if you don't have him, but you have the other ones, absolutely worth doing as well. So lots to like so far. Legendaries, I don't normally recommend crafting legendaries because they pop up in gems uh, in, in chests all the time. So uh, this one here. Silences, stuns and drains mana from an enemy with a 25% chance to destroy them. That's okay, but you're relying on luck again and I don't like things that rely on luck too much. I like definite spells, if you know what I mean, where you know for sure something's going to happen because... If the game's in a bad mood with you sometimes, it seems, then <laughs> those lucky things just never seem to happen. King Silensis deals splash damage to an enemy boosted by wild folk allies and steals one magic from all enemies affected by his spell and burns all enemies. So that can be quite good, but his best thing about him is the all wild folk allies start with 50% mana. Third trait in an all wild folk team, that is really, really good. Everybody's going to start with a huge bunch of mana. Urskula deals scatter damage boosted by enraged allies and then enrage all allies and gives them six attack. Nothing fantastic, but again, that third trait, all Urska allies start with 50% mana is really, really good. And in a team with all Urska allies, that is going to be something you're going to want to put in the team and probably at the bottom. Dullahan, not actually used this one very much so far, so can't do too much of an opinion on it deals damage to an enemy boosted by ally and enemy deaths then kill either the first enemy or the first ally so um yeah that sounds very random to me <laughs> so i uh yeah i'm not sure about that one i wouldn't craft it though the fact that it could just kill the first ally doesn't sound very useful at all so that is it for the troops there so absolutely from this one just a quick recap arachnid weaver Absolutely essential. Infernus, superb. Scourge of Honor, really, really good as well. And the weapons, Rope Dart, absolutely 100%. Go get Rope Dart. And Twin Claws, I really like the sound of as well. All right, now to the event itself. Oh, let's just get this creature first. What does it do? Creates three wild cards if an. Uh, no, creates three wild cards, great. And if a, another ally is enchanted, gain an extra turn. Then enchant a random ally. Okay, so if you get to cast this twice quickly, you're guaranteed to get an extra turn because he'll have already enchanted somebody. The traits, the first one is so so. 
Middle one, 25% chance to create a times two wild card when matching four or more gems. So, so. And then reduce damage from spells by 25%. So yeah, the trait's nothing special, but that spell actually could be um, quite good. Interested to have a look at this one, so we'll get this up to Mythic. That's that done. Now let's look at the actual event itself. And create my team and show you how I'll go about creating a team for something like this. So what is it? What have we got? Troop type, Raksha, and we're restricted to red. All right. This is how I'd go about building a team for this. We've already got all our troops here. I would change the card name, or type, sorry, to base rarity. So we've got our most powerful troops first and see what they do. Or Uberstet, I like the sound of. For this kind of uh, event, as soon as you kill someone, he's going to automatically kill the other one. So this will be semi-effective at first, a little bit slow going because of his high mana cost, but towards the higher levels where he's automatically going to kill um, another enemy, this will speed up and become should become really, really fast. So we'll chuck him in there for a start, and because he's Divine and Raksha, Ideally, we wouldn't mind someone else who's divine. Umaneth is quite good. Deals a bunch of damage. And if they die, it creates a load of skulls. So that can effectively as well get another two kills quite quickly. Because if you're guaranteed that kill, you can create a load of skulls. But it's not set in stone, that one. That um, can miss. When you create those skulls, I've cast this time and time again. And it's just set the opponent up. You really do need to have the first opponent entangled before you actually risk something like that. And nothing else is really standing out to me in a way that makes me think, oh, they're really good. Sekhmer is good. Transforms blue to skulls and brown to yellow. Then deals 38 damage to an enemy boosted by all other allies' magic. Or 38 in my case. It will vary upon your level. Good set of traits, especially the third one. Gain two magic on red gem matches. So we'll pop her in there. All right, let's have a look at the weapon first because we may be able to complement one of the uh, troops with what weapon we're going to use. So red weapons wise. Right, if I'm going to use Uberstet as my main damage dealer, so it's going to take 18 mana to charge something like a doomed crossbow up and then you're still relying on a certain amount of luck to get the lineups like on this one for example you need you know that transforms blue to doom skulls so even when you charge that you're still relying on a little bit of luck to get that alignment on blue to skulls so i like that but it's not great but i do want something that's going to cause damage because i want to go through this quite quickly right fist of heaven is standing out to me now because i want something that explodes Explode, in my case, 35 yellow gems and grant, grant a random status effect to all divine allies and summon a divine troop. So this is actually pretty cool. It's only 14 to cast, so we'll get that charged up pretty quickly. Explode that. That should charge up Uberset quickly, who will then get a couple of quick kills. Right, I'm going to go for that. That sounds good to me. Right, and because that is exploding a load of yellow... And I happen to have the benefit of two Uberstets. I am going to chuck another one of him in there. All right, if you don't have two Uberstets, Umanath would work pretty well as well. It deals 38 damage to an enemy because, and then create all those skulls if they die. Because Uberstet can do a lot of damage. And even if the first one doesn't die, then it could be guaranteed with a Umanath on the next cast. In the same way, like Uberstet will get a kill and then an automatic kill. Umanath, in that situation, if Uberstet didn't quite do enough, that damage you cause on the first part of the spell may well be enough to get that kill and then generate a ton of skulls. Right, so um, that is what I'm going to try at first. Now, banners wise, the way I do this, I look at the colours, I go, okay, we've got red, green, yellow, brown, purple, so we don't use blue. So I'm going to look at anything. That's minus blue and just hit that straight away as a base point. And I go right to the end. Now I'm just going to look at the bottom for anything that's minus blue. That is better than what we had. Let's 
looking at the bottom for any minus blue. That's not as good as what we had. Neither is that. I preferred the lots of lots of lots of brown from the other one, and that's not as good either. And that's better than the other one. That's great because we get a double red on everything. Uh, we get um, plus green as well, so we get Fist of Heaven charged up nice and quickly, which we then explode to, to charge up those Uber stats. Don't think we're going to do better than that. So I'm going to call that right. All right, class. I haven't looked at what particular class would be good for this yet because I'm still getting a few of these to 100. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to put it on the one I'm working on at the moment, which is Warden, and just take a quick look at that and see how that's going to affect us. Hunter's Mark is okay. Root Trap and Tangle at the start is handy. Don't particularly want a Leaf Storm at the start. So I will go to Razor Armor, so we add to our Skull Damage. Yeah, nothing particularly great there. Dispel all enemies on four or five gem matches is okay. You may well have a better class you want to use for that, but um, quite often these battles are fairly straightforward, so it's not actually absolutely, absolutely essential what is there. All right, so let's um, get this going. Our deal with this will be to get Fist of Heaven charged up nice and quick, explode that, and then we can get our Uber stats rocking and rolling. So we'll grab the green. So looking for green and red at first. Now that's ready. And I've just pinched a lot of our yellow. I've slowed the speed down to times three on, on the speed. Some people were saying some things were happening too quick sometimes. And it's hard for especially new people to actually get what's happened sometimes. But um, I'll go with whatever the majority prefer. If people like it on times three, I'll leave it on times three. If most people are happy with it on times four. I'll stick it back to times four. Now we've got both Uber stats ready. What we can do now is just kill one like that and just kill the other one on the next turn, which will take out the other one automatically. Could have just cast the Uber stats in turn. That would have done the same thing. At first, these early battles are going to be mega straightforward. Grab them from the top so we don't adjust all the ones underneath it automatically. No green and red there, so we'll just get a nice four match there on the yellow. And there's our red. Explode Fist of Heaven. And Uberstead is ready to go if he takes out the first one guaranteed, which he will. So you can see what he's going to do when you press the square button if you look on the right. In my case, deals 45 damage to the two weakest enemies uh, with a boost of uh, plus 58. So that is absolutely plenty. Now we just need a little bit more to finish them off. And then that will do. Like I say, in the Soul Forge, that um, event weapon that does deals damage to the enemies boosted by Rashka or, or, or Pride Land's allies, that can be useful in the events. Normally, they do do the event, so the weapon that's there is actually quite beneficial to the event. So if you don't have Fist of Heaven, maybe good to pick one of those up. We'll do you a good deed. Like I say, but absolutely get Rope Dart and absolutely get Arachnian Weaver. No questions. Just get them two. So I did do a Arachnian Weaver video just very recently, which is in my other videos. Such a good troop. Really, really effective. Yeah, let's blow up these yellow, see what we get. Be 
Bush, bush, bush. Yeah. Oh, we've got brown down here. That'll do. That's, that's the first. We'll take them out because that's going to take them out first. And there's another two dead. Actually, I don't think I did the medals on this. Which you should do. I don't think I showed that. Right. I will go back after this game and do that because that was a slight mistake on my part. A way to make these uh, events easier is to get the potion of enchantment from the shop absolutely straight away. So you go to the shop and this tier one, it's only 30 gems. You get that. You get some troops which are helpful to, towards the event. Some sigils, shards. And that all-important potion of enchantment so everybody will start enchanted. So that might work well with that... Um, troop that's from this where it, was, it creates wild cards and it was something to do with an extra turn if there's somebody enchanted on, on the team if you can afford it i actually recommend getting the first three tiers because it's really helpful because you get the badges or the tokens sorry which upgrade to a badge which eventually upgrade to a medal so i'll do that just for the effect in fact i'll do that later i'll just show how this team works just by not having all those extra upgrades Let's go back to fight. See now we've got the weapon, the event thing you see for the boost. Where is it? Arcane badge plus forty percent spell damage for all troops in the current event. We'll have that, but not swap it for that. If I actually put it in the right place, it would help. That'll do. So now we get extra damage too, and we get an enchanted start. Should have done that, that, that bit first, really. So, but definitely do that at the beginning. Now we've got a potion of explosion as well. That's absolutely given us a really fast start because we've got that fist of heaven straight away. Like on your Uberstat now, this is where you have to have a quick look to see if you're going to actually kill somebody outright or not. Like it does 41 damage and the boost is 65. So that's 65, 106. As long as somebody hasn't got more than 106, we'll kill them outright. So we will kill two of these absolutely straight away. But I'll just grab this skull damage first. Not that it actually made a difference. It was probably better off doing it the other way around. It doesn't actually really make much of a difference. Let's try and get the Fist of Heaven charged up. No green, no red, so we... Just grab anything because basically our now our segments charged up look that's good transforms blue to skulls and brown to yellow so blue to skulls these convert ones you always have to wait for them to work that's why they're you know i, I, I like them but i don't love them and they're hard work as well you have to really look around and and see but that does work quite good on that conversion and it's pretty much guaranteed a kill as well because it does a lot of damage. But we did set them up on skulls. I thought we had an extra turn there somewhere. I must have looked at that in the wrong way. Those conversion ones, you have to be nice and nice and awake. And I'm not quite awake yet. It's still quite early in the morning here. Not been up long. I thought I'd crack on with the video. Right, so red would be nice. Grab that blue anyway. So what does segment do again? Blue to skulls, brown to yellow. Right, so brown to yellow is not doing anything. Neither is blue to skulls. Because generally you only want to cast that when you've got like a guaranteed four match. You don't want to do it on something like that. Quirky. You're setting the team up for a... <laughs> A critical hit on skulls, so we'll just explode that few yellow we've got there. See what that does on Fist of Heaven. We'll take them out. Now we'll cast good old Uberstet. Blue to skulls is nothing, so we'll explode this again. Oh, 
blue to skulls we've got so we'll do that servers are slow today look at this come on game get on with it hunting the leo corn come on you can do it see pretty soon we're gonna have to think um slightly more tactically on this we're gonna have to maybe get a skull hit first on the first enemy to bring their health and armor down the forecasting uber step i'm not quite sure what level we'll have to do that on it's not quite yet we're okay right now but it will get to the point where you have to hit someone first to lower their health just a little bit enough for uh, uber step to get the kill which then guarantees the next one boom That was nice. That's guaranteed kill. Do we have Bluto Skulls? Nope. So we'll explode this again. Yeah, that was slightly unfortunate. Nothing there on Sekma either. But blue to skulls now got three. And one there as well. Ah, just for fun I'm gonna do this. There we go. The cool thing about Sekma is she gains two magic every time you collect red as well, so her spell goes up every time we're collecting red. Gains two magic on red gem matches. So you deal that damage automatically and boosted by all other allies' magic means you can, you know, one shot quite a few opponents because our magic should be quite high. Yeah, boost is plus 55. So that's nearly 100 she does on that as well as transform those gems uh, to a different colour and create skulls as well. So pretty decent. Not much yellow there, so we'll, we'll do the skull bash first. Now we'll explode this. That was enough to wipe them out. Now we've got loads of blue to skulls, which is handy. So we'll do this on Sekma. That will kill him and then get some extra damage on the others. And we didn't even need Uber Step for this. Oh, or did we? Because they dodged. Good old dodge. I do like a 30% dodge that works 7 times out of 10 for the AI. <laughs> it never quite seems to work that well for us. And that's all part of the fun. Nice mix of red and green there. We'll take that. Second mode's ready to go. So we got... Blue to skulls, nothing in particular there, and green to brown. The way to remember some of these things is, I think these are quite clever, some of these, because this is Call of the Sun. Just think of grass being burnt, so green transforming. That's actually not green to, to brown, it's actually um, brown to yellow. <laughs> I've got that completely wrong. <laughs> wow, I need to wake up. Right, so it transforms brown to yellow, so it's the opposite. It's actually taking burnt grass say and making it good again or yellow or i don't know i'm talking absolutely nuts now i'm going absolutely mad right so forget what i just said about greens because green's got nothing to do with it i'm actually going mildly insane right so just blue to skulls and brown to yellow right that changes everything because i was looking for green before which is why it wasn't working i must be thinking of somebody else or i'm going insane more likely i'm going insane to be honest So uh, we'll do that because they're going to die anyway. Now Uber Step will be guaranteed to kill the last two as soon as he gets to go. Oh, 
Uh, next one. So brown to yellow. Got to remember brown to yellow because that is important. I was looking before the completely, completely the wrong match. That's um, quite ludicrous. But there is something like six hundred odd troops in this game, or even more than that. So that's my excuse. It's a lot to remember. Hell of a lot to remember. Do a skull bash on them first, because then we're guaranteed Uber step with out having. Oh, he's been changed to a snowy owl. What the hell? Well, that's slowed us up a little bit. Damn lycanthropy. Uberstet. From a mega beast with ultimate savagery changed to an owl. That's embarrassing. All right, got blue to skulls, so I'll do this anyway. And we'll put the first damage on her. That gets her into... One shot range, and I will cast Uberstet as revenge for our now hourly ally. Hunting the Leocorn. Start with a nice bit of green and a skull bash if the explosion doesn't change at all. That's the only thing with the um, explosion ones. They're, they're good. I'm not saying it's not good, but the amount of times you see it actually quite a good start. And then it get changed because the explosion literally changed everything. Guaranteed two kills here now. Now we're getting to the point where Uberstet comes utterly into his own because... That guaranteed second kill is superb. And we've got the canthropy again. Do not change into something stupid. All right, get this charge up first. There we go. Take that. That's the only thing. Sometimes when you kill someone by accident, um, it actually doesn't help Uberstet. Because in our ideal world, we would have preferred for them to stay, stay alive then. Maybe in, in Uberstet's range, but it's easy to take the skull hit first and guarantee it. And the time it takes to look at Uberstet and work out if he's going to kill someone outright or not. And you've got a skull hit and then a guaranteed kill with him the next time. That's probably quicker than looking at his, his uh, magic and working it all out and stuff. Unless you know it offhand. If you know it offhand, then that's even better. So I'm going to do this one because we may get a red drop from here, which gives us four. Which we did. That happens more often than you think because the odds are only seven to one. So it seems lucky when that happens, but you've got to be in it to win it, as they say. See, now I will be not lazy and have a look. So yeah, see, we're nowhere near the range of killing one of those outright at the moment because we've got 76 and 39. So that's nothing like the near 200 we need to kill them. So we need to do some damage first. So we'll explode this again. See if we get some... Some more damage. Now they're both ready. So the good thing about Uberstat is, if you cast one now, you're not going to kill anybody, but you've just weakened the first one. So we take that first one out now. And by casting the second one, we are now guaranteed to take out the weak one and the stronger one. That is a good thing about having two of them. I'm not even going to look. I'm just going to cast this anyway, see if we get lucky. And we did. Keep on doing the hardest level that I can, because you do you do you do have to make some um, small adjustments as you go along playing the game. When you decide to cast Uberstep, for example, will change as the opponent gets more powerful. Like now, in an ideal world, we don't want to actually kill them. Like these aren't very strong right now; they're going to die probably anyway. But um, to say the ones underneath were a lot more powerful, you wouldn't want an accidental skull bash because you actually want to keep the weakened opponent there so Uberstet gets the guaranteed second kill. Now they will both be dealed. And that is them. Right, we've got Red Slayer. 
I'll go back and grab that quickly because I'm not a fan of these tasks. They're a, literally our task. They're an irritant and they're a bit of a pain. Sometimes on some of them you have to keep on going, you know, literally backwards and forwards. Just collect or make get two gem keys or something. It's like just hold you up and you have to go back out, do that, come back in again, collect it. And they are a bit of a chore. All right, let's go back to that event. Always grab the four matches from the start if you can, unless they get blown up. In that case, it doesn't matter. <laughs> All right, there's only a handful of yellow there, but you do get some lucky cascades sometimes. So it was often still worth casting. It's ready to go again, which I will do. Look, the cool thing is where that weapon puts um, a random status effect on a divine troop. That's really good because if you get enchant or blessed or reflect, they're all really, really good, good things which really help out. All right, that's going to kill two straight away. That's going to give us yellow and green. That's going to give him a bash, which is going to make Uberstep kill both people. I always call them people. Not really people, are they? They're like all sorts of weird things. Why do I call them people? That's not a person. Neither is that. And that's definitely not a, a people. Anyway, one of my weird habits. I don't know what was in my Weetabix. I'm in a funny mood today. I think my girlfriend's put something in it, which made me feel all a bit weird. I'm talking like a madman half the time. Uh, let's just get this weapon charged. Come on, Fist of Heaven, you can do more than that. That's better. Much better. You step when now kills two people, guaranteed. What's our boost? 65. So. Is that enough? Oh, what? Left them both on one. What the hell? Wow. We've got blue to skulls anyway, so we can definitely do that. Left them both on one. Wowzers. Just do a few more and then wrap the video up. Got four sigils left, I think it was. So let's get a bit of early damage on them. Put some into uber step range. Don't take my yellow. Oh, how dare you? How dare you bash me? There we go. Uber step's ready to go. Two kills. Bish bash. Sekma's ready. Look for blue to skulls first, nothing. And then brown to yellow. It's brown to yellow, not like I was saying earlier. So we'll just do that. And without looking, we'll do that because she was going to do a load of damage. Yeah, I'd say this is quite a good mix. Like I said earlier, if you don't have two Uber Stets, Chuck in a Umanath there instead. That will do a pretty decent job at the same time. Or instead of. Get that, because we get the red at the same time. Oh, the enemy's gone to super weak, because it's the first legendary one. So they um, always start off quite unimpressively weak. Come on, it's so irritating when these servers are slow like this. It's like, 
on the game which is often about speed and just getting things done quickly and, and you get used to just getting into a rhythm and doing things nice and fast when they're slow like this it's like it feels like a right right drag sometimes not drag it's probably a bit harsh but um you just want to get on with it it's just all about like getting it done especially those tasks it's like i don't want to hang around on those at all i want to get them wiped out as soon as possible right now we're probably not going to kill anybody straight away nope we're nowhere near so we're going to need some damage first from somewhere i will cast that again then to get some extra bit of damage and see if we get a lucky skull bash which we didn't and it's not been very nice on the yellow placement but we've got blue to skulls now on Sekma, so we'll bash someone with that. Now let's put them into uber step range, so guaranteed a second kill. That's the only thing with um, uber step is his vague weak point. He actually gets weaker the less opponents um, are left. Deals damage to the, to the two weakest enemies boosted by all ally and enemy attack. So, as the enemy loses troops, and if we lose a couple of troops, he actually gets less powerful. Let's just grab that. Because now I'll cast them now. He's only going to do well, only 144 is good enough, but that's you know boosted by the medals as well. Behemoth. Potions activated. What should we do there? Take this green here, because we get that, and then the red. Kill the first one, because that's guaranteed. Because we're going to get two kills with Uberstet anyway. And this is going to wipe out the last one. Easy, easy. Yeah, so if um, you're still watching this, it'd be cool if you liked and subscribed, because it really does help. I do all sorts of videos. I do these event ones, the teams I pick. I do uh, different videos on how to use the best mythics. I do top tens. My favourite top 10 common troops. I'm soon going to be doing my top 10 epic troops and things like that. Soul Forge recommendations. Tactics. All sorts of stuff. And towards the end of the week I'll even chuck in the odd random arcade game video. I do love retro games and that's how this channel actually quite first started. But I thought, hey, I'll start showing some Gems of War stuff as well. So now I'll do both. It's a bit of a mixture. Right, I should do a couple more, because I have no idea how long this has been going on for now. But it feels like it's more than half an hour. I don't want to start starving anyone and making people thirsty and that, you know. Don't want to have a habit of making people have to grab a packet of biscuits and an urn of tea or coffee before they start watching one of my videos. That's no good. Could be good though. Alright, he's down to 140. Is that enough? Not quite. Ooh. So, we'll use this to do heavy damage to somebody first. And then that guarantees two deaths with our Uberstet. Right, the third one's going to be ready in a couple of turns. So, not a deal world, we'll get a quick bit of skull damage from somewhere. Oh, I didn't see that. I'll explode one yellow gem, how about that? Now this is where you're probably better off, unless this, the first uber step was ready, just waiting around for a skull hit, because... I don't know, did you get the boost from the... Nah, it wasn't quite enough, didn't think it was. 
yeah, like I was saying before, I was impatient myself. On that sort of situation, because of the, the boost, you were better off waiting for something like this. One skull hit first, then you'd be guaranteed to take out the second one at the same time. So rather than that, I've got to wait for another skull bash, which is there. Weir cat. I mean, this fist, fist of heaven is quite good. I do like it. The fact it has an explosion and a summon is really good. Let's get some f damage on them, nice and early. Don't kill them! Oh, see, I didn't want to actually kill them then because they were in perfect uber step range. But now we can do this with this troop anyway. Yeah, now it's an easy double kill for Uberstet. A lot of teams, it takes a little bit of time to get up into the flow of how to use them properly. Like, I've made many mistakes on these ones already, just doing these, like, especially on those um, Sekma <laughs> colours earlier on, where I was looking at the wrong colours to transform. That's an absolute classic. And, um, yeah, it's getting into the habit of, with Uberstet of getting... A little bit of skull damage first, so you're guaranteed that first kill with Uber Step, which then guarantees the second one. Patience is a virtue sometimes in this game. Let's get some red and explode all these yellow. Yeah, it's a really good weapon. When you think like how good something like Mountain Crusher is. Mountain Crusher is still a popular weapon. A lot of people still really rate that weapon and it's still really good. But all that does is explode a load of brown gems. But this in comparison explodes the same kind of amount, if not more, of yellow gems, but also gives a status effect to divine alloys and has a summon as well. So really rather good. Get some more charge going. Oh, I missed the extra turn on the other side. Clumsy. I sit too close to a telly. That's one of my reasons I don't see things like that quick enough. I've got a 65 inch TV and I'm about, I think, eight or nine feet away from it, which is fantastic for action games. That's why. I kind of sit that close, but um, for Gems of War, it actually is ever slightly in your face. You don't quite see the gem matches as clearly as you do on a smaller screen or from further away. Like when I check back the video sometimes on, on the laptop, I see the, the sort of mistakes I make on, on this now, like I missed that four match on the right hand side. I'll see that absolutely instantly on the laptop. But when it's on the telly and it's, you know, a few feet apart because of the size of the screen, then it's quite easy to easy to miss it but there's a video if you found it useful or helpful be cool if you liked and subscribed but most of all thanks for watching see you again next time bye for now